in 2002, the Coalport Borough Council was working on a HUD 202 program project, wherein a HUD 202 program project was granted an award to build a low-income elderly home in Coalport Borough, Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The memorial you are viewing was moved from its original position of residency due to the construction need for more land for the project. In 1966, as a historical background, Mr. Ronald Clare Leitner was the chairman of the original memorial placement of the war memorial placed directly in front of the then Coalport Borough Office and Water Company building on Main Street, Coalport, Pennsylvania. The original committee, including the Lions Club and citizens of Coalport Borough, created the war memorial for those veterans who gave their lives in service for the United States of America. In 2002, there became a conflict due to the HUD 202 program plans to increase the footprint on the former borough property on Main Street in Coalport, Pennsylvania. How did Coalport Borough become interested in building a HUD 202 program project? Coalport Borough Council President Joseph Neveling assigned the Reverend Gerald W. Spade Sr. to the Grant Funds Committee, a branch of the Coalport Borough local government. The members of the committee were Reverend Gerald W. Spade Sr., Chairman, John R. Roop and Scott Askey, both counselors for Coalport Borough Council. The Grant Funds Committee did not have attendees uh, in the meetings, so Chairman Spade ad advertised for volunteers from the community to join the committee. Ms. Rita Hahn was the first volunteer, and later Mrs. Walter Huey was the second volunteer. And in the course of committee work, Mrs. Huey suggested the committee should investigate the possibility of a low-income housing for the community. Chairman Spade contacted HUD of Pennsylvania. Chairman Spade contacted Mr. Terry Gates and met at the Vision Press building to discuss the HUD program. Mr. Gates suggested it was a good time to make application. In the application process, Chairman Spade asked Mr. Gates, if one would like to ensure a grant application with HUD, how would one be successful and who would one contact for help? Mr. Gates suggested Ida of Altoona and more specifically Bernice Leviston. Mrs. Leviston was contacted by Chairman Spade and she agreed to come. Mrs. Leviston inspected several sites and the Coalport Barrow Office and Waterworks Building property was the determination. Coalport Barrow was granted a HUD 202 program privilege. Design, contracts, meetings, personnel work, on the HUD 20, uh, 202 project until a conflict arose. The video will explain the conflict. The borough property on Main Street was sold including the memorial site that was not deeded to anyone. The footprint of the building had to be enlarged to include the memorial site area. Designs were recreated and construction began. 
and the memorial was temporarily m moved and after bricks work began the memorial was placed in the face of the HUD building and the building now we know as Black Diamond Estates. The video you are about to see next gives definition to the conflict. Mr. Ronald C. Leitner will explain his view on the war memorial issue. On October the 7th, 2002, Mr. Ronald Leitner went to the Coalport Borough Council meeting to protest the moving of the memorial as you will see in the video. After the October 7th, uh, 2002 meeting of council, on October 9th, 2002, Councilman Spade praying about the issue of relocating the memorial on the way to the Zion Baptist Church in Ansonville, Pennsylvania for prayer meeting, was instructed by our Heavenly Father to contact Mr. Daniel Gibbons for the purpose of securing two parking spaces for a place in his parking lot for the war memorial. Mr. Daniel Gibbons was not home and his wife said he would call later. Arriving home from the Zion Baptist Church meeting later, Mr. Daniel Gibbons said on a telephone communication, you go and tell Ron we will work out a way to give him a memorial place. I will speak with my father. Mr. Donald J. Gibbons wanted to meet at the Gibbons Funeral Home where on the front porch of Gibbons Funeral Home, Main Street, Coalport, Pennsylvania, Mr. Donald Gibbons, the Honorable Joseph Neveling, Mr. Ronald C. Leitner, and Chairman Reverend Gerald W. Spade Sr. met to discuss the site for the relocation of the war memorial. Mr. Donald Gibbons was feeble and needed a chair. And Mr. Donald Gibbons sitting on the chair facing the parking lot across Main Street and all attendees in back of Mr. Gibbons heard him explain. When people leave my funeral home, I want people to see the memorial right there. As Mr. Gibbons was pointing to the place in the parking lot, Mr. Gibbons further explained, I am granting permission for two parking uh, spots for the memorial. Mr. Ronald Claire Leitner was the chairman of the relocation of the war memorial as he was in the first construction of the war memorial. As you can see, the memorial is beautiful and profound. Several entities are associated with the relocation of the memorial. There are plaques to honor these entities. I will read them for you to hear and see. The plaques stand behind the war memorial as they were supporters of the relocation of the war memorial and the plaques stand either side of the memorial to give tribute to those who encouraged and supported the memorial as you can see. One plaque is missing. A tribute to Ronald C. Leitner for his faithful work for the memorial. Mr. Leitner once said while constructing the first memorial, I am going to plant grass tonight and tomorrow the grass will be two inches high to mow. Everyone that was helping on the construction laughed at Ron. The next day, 
the grass was two inches high and very green not sure but he himself planted sod or place sod on the complete memorial site that night we do respectfully at this time in may during the anticipation of memorial day do in remembrance of great Coalport area people remember the great sacrifice that men and women made from Coalport, Pennsylvania in giving their lives in service for the United States of America. I honor them this day. In memory of Donald J. Gibbons, Veterans Memorial Site donated by the Gibbons family. Thanks to State Representative Camille Bud George for his support and in relocating the Veterans Memorial. In honor of all veterans and POWMIA flags and flagpoles donated by the Richard L. Beers VFW Post 7043. Thanks to Kervinsville State Bank for their financial support and encouragement in relocating this Veterans Memorial. Dedicated to all veterans from the Colport area who have served their country in war and peace that all may continue to live in freedom. Discussion? Aye. 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 Visitors and guests, do you have anything with you? Not at this time. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'd like to take 10 or 15 minutes of your time just to show you what our community used to be like. And number mm -hmm. first on the agenda is the War Memorial. All right. I'm going to pass these papers if you take a look at them. That War Memorial mm -hmm. is very sacred as far as I'm concerned. Lions Club built that war memorial for the veterans, the men and women who had fought in, in the war and in peacetime. And I was the chairman of it, and when we went to visit the council, none of you folks was on the council, Paul Winslow was the secretary at the time, that monument was never supposed to be moved. <clears throat> That's why it was put there. And it didn't bother me too much that I heard that you may be lightened to put that down at the park. Well, I said, instead of taking it to the park, if it don't mean that much to this community, why don't you take it up and put it at the bony pile? And that's the way I feel. I mean, to me, that mm -hmm. monument really means something. And I, do, I know, Mr. Neville, I'm going to speak for you because you was there, Paul was there, to help with this thing. Okay, Ray Redwall, Lynn Swaggerts, Mayor Lang, who I have high respect for. I mean, you folks don't know what military men has come out of this area. That monument means more to me than a high-rise building for a bunch of people. Hey, I like to see the building here, but I also feel that that monument will not be moved. 
And if it's up to me, and I've made this statement before, and I, I'm very sincere in saying it, I will sit on top of that monument if you're going to try to move it. And I have enough people to bring my food and my blankets to keep me warm. And for the council to state that they want to move that monument down to the park, I mean, it's asinine. I mean, it's, it's really disturbing to me. And I know it'd be disturbing to a lot of the veterans. I don't want to see anything blocked, but I definitely don't want to see that monument moved because it means more to me and, and a lot of people with bygones. And if Johnny Harbor was involved, Jack Burmeister, Richard Burmeister, I could name many people who was involved in it. And Paul knows this. He was there. He got his feet muddy. And I just... As far as I'm concerned, I do not want to see that monument moved. <clears throat> you may say, I live on the other side of the river. I do, but I have a property here in town. Can I interject the thought here, Rob? The monument will remain, but maybe not in the same position as what it is right now. It will be incorporated in the, the building site, the main street. I appreciate that, Mr. Deving, but when, yes. we, when we talk, go back through the minutes, back in 19, what, 66, Paul, 65, whatever, and see, the third council at that time says that that monument will never be moved. And if you start digging that footer out, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. It is deep. There's a lot of cement there. Uh, Mr. Wright, I don't know who informed you that that was going to be moved to the park, but it has never been mentioned in this room that it would be moved at all, and never mind to the park. Well, like I said, that's one I... thing that it that was stable in all negotiations that the monument would remain. Now, the only thing that may happen during the construction of the building is it would be removed, and then it'll be incorporated into the front of the building as part of the building. The same monument, the same footer, everything. And the only reason it may be moved is to preserve it so it's not damaged during construction. Now, that we did agree to because of the chance of damage during construction. But it will not be removed as far as being taken out and put somewhere else. It will be set back where it's sitting. And we understand the last correspondence we had with the last, I believe Roger Brunel was here, and said that they were, the monument would be set and there would be glass put around from the front of the building around the monument so it would be enclosed and protected. And we thanked him for that because we thought that this would preserve the monument even further. So I don't know who informed you, but that's one thing that was never discussed in this room of it moving because uh, that was from day one, it would not move. But that really, I mean, that upset me. And like I say, uh, I still feel that they want to do anything, they can do it right where it's set. I mean, that's. Uh, <clears throat> and like I say, I don't apologize if I trample on anyone's feet tonight because I know how I feel. I was involved in the whole thing, and and uh, I'll stand on the ground on it. That's. Uh, I don't know how the rest of the council feels, but I'm pleased to find out that there's some people in the community that's concerned. Because uh, at times we wonder if there are people who's concerned. Jack, I'm concerned. Take take those papers. Look down there where we on the park. That's where if I have a few minutes, okay? Number one, when we started the park, the Lions Club was going to redo the park. You know about it. Yeah. Okay. Doug Kasky and I and I'm not taking the credit, Doug Kasky is representing Larry Slaughter, we were the only ones who could t get off, okay? We went to Harrisburg. Austin Harrier got us $44,000 for the park. I did all my work, volunteered, because I said I would. There's Freddie Blotty, uh, Doug Kasky, Hughes Kasky, Joe Neveling, uh, Jack Roop, you, you was there, Bob Knoll. How many people were down there working for that? All right? You see your mother on there? Yeah. Okay, your mother is involved in helping to to, to uh, get this going. Joe Bowers, Joe Kosick. That's when we have people working together. And like I say, you may think I shouldn't say nothing, but the council ought to get together and work together. 
I mean, there's nothing you can do. <clears throat> nothing. I mean, those pictures, I don't know, the wife dug them out somewhere. And uh, it made me feel good to see how many people right there. Like I say, Joe Kosick, uh, there's Wade Redbaum, Doug Caskey. You can just name them over and over. Mrs. Root. How many of them? Mr. Lomar. Yes, Pat Lomar, oh, Jack gosh. Burmeister, Richard Burmeister, Carl Gilligan. Carl Gilligan. Pat People Pat you never dream of. Dale Rigger. Mr. McNally gave us a hand. I mean, he was just a little shyster then, but yeah. <laughs> I didn't mean that you expanded. I mean, you you was younger. <laughs> Point ball taken. <laughs> Dick Trent. I mean, I could stand here and name him for hours, but I don't want to take all your time. I just want to show you how the community at that time worked together. And I, I, like I say, if I tramp on your toes, I don't apologize. Uh, I don't feel that the council has a nipped filling like we did at those days. When you went to talk to the council, they all agreed. And that's what I'm saying on that memorial. They all agreed to never be moved. Mr. President, did you get the new drawings of how the memorial was going to be preserved? Oh, yeah. At this point, I don't care how the drawing shows. I mean, there's a lot of changes that could be made, but that monument should stay where it's at. He makes a good point. Well, it is a good point. But, uh, I'm not privy to the new drawing. Uh, at this time, I'm not, uh, I can't say one way or uh, oh, I haven't seen it. Uh, uh, um, this issue was, was brought up a long time ago. Did we ever establish any minutes or any uh, deed transfer to the Lions Club or to the Memorial uh, Committee? And that was one question that I never heard <coughs> anybody answer. Okay, those days a man's handshake was a contract. As far as a contract, a deed being written up, don't mean hogwash to us. And I'm <coughs> saying it very openly, Mr. Spade. That monument was given, that ground was given to the Lions Club, and that's exactly what it's going to say. Notice of uh, April 4th, 1966, after a brief discussion on the space requirements and general appro approval of the idea of the council, man, it was decided to provide a space near the highway for a permanent community honor roll. Carl Gilling moved at the Colport Lions Club to give a commission, permission to use the borough property in front of the municipal building to erect a permanent honor roll for the community. The space requ requirements are to be discussed and set by the street committee and the Lions Club committee for approval at the next regular council meeting, seconded by Lynn Slaughter, carried unanimously. And it's a permanent, right? April 4th, 66. Yes. So there we go. I think in the next meeting, they just said that they had uh, so much space. So much space. Mm -hmm. They give us more space. <coughs> First, they give us the smaller space. We went back and negotiated with them, and they give us more space. So do you know what that monument also meant to the council we had at that time? Mr. President, uh, this is a valid point. Uh, the problem is, um, is Mr. Bunnell aware of this fact? If it is, we may have a giant size lawsuit on our hands here. <coughs> because uh, Mr. Leitner's uh, statements are a valid one, but if we as a council uh, failed to disclose this, causing uh, harm to the project, it may fall back onto the taxpayers as a giant-sized lawsuit. 
Mr. Spade, I don't see where there's any lawsuit involved at all. No, I mean, we're I not, didn't we're say not I said talking about a lawsuit here. We're talking about maintaining this <coughs> monument. Mm -hmm. And the minute there's something said, you talk, start talking lawsuit. Let's come back to be where we're uh, we civilized have a, we and have a, talk about, yes, about but what's this going is a on here. This is a reality. Uh, Mr. President, uh, I would uh, rebut uh, the Vice President's in the fact that we that ground is sold and there was no revi uh, no provision except that we as a council voted that the monument could be moved it could be uh, uh, that additional land could be moved forward and that they would maintain it and if I'm I will stand corrected if Mr. Bennell comes and explains that I'm in incorrect but the new drawings he explicitly showed us and they demonstrated the footprint of it is going to be much larger. Uh, and the monument definitely will be moved and we no longer own the property and if we now come up with a uh, discovery that was not given to them, I, I, I'm just saying the obvious is, not because I want it, it there's an obvious repercussion and I think that it uh, should be um, Mr. His Mr. Enlightener's statements are valid. Are they are. Valid. They are valid. Did you have the ground surveyed that they bought? Uh, I understand they surveyed it. Is there marks down there? I, I, I have no knowledge. No marks where the monument is, but that's the monument is. I, we at this point we don't we don't we know as much about it as you do. Only thing we did was we sold it. It's done. Deal. It's you gone. You did not sell that piece in the front. That that is in a stipulation that that monument would be maintained. The only thing that has been said is it may need to be moved to preserve it during construction, but it would be reinstated inside a glass closure. Right now, they now this we felt was beneficial to the monument and to the community because if it's in a glass co closure then there's ne there should never be deterioration and uh, which and according to of course I haven't seen the latest drawings but the drawings of the last drawings that we saw was the front of the building and the monument inside the glass which is like between the building which is made this way and that was the last drawings we saw which could have been changed. Have you ever seen anything sacred moved? As they in the council. Hey, I don't want to take up all your meeting. Uh, your meeting in this. I'm just telling you <laughs> my feelings, and I think I, I, I see where you're coming from. Bro. I really do. Uh, not for case of argument, but the cemetery is sacred. Cemeteries have been moved. Uh, but this issue here, it's uh, this is for veterans yeah, of the foreign wars, it's, it's men and women. Sacred, okay. okay. But, but again, I, I, what I'm trying to stress is to you that the council did take pains to see that it would be Rich in the front of the building and as it is erected now. In other words, they're, they're not going to destroy it. They're not going to put a different one up. They, they were saying that it may need to be moved for construction and set back again, and they would close it to preserve it. Now, we thought that this was um, very good for the fact that it would preserve it. It's not being moved, it's not being taken nowhere, it's just being preserved. And and you know, as well as I do, because you you run equipment, no matter how careful you are, something could bump it and damage it during the construction if it's close. And uh, we don't want it moved. I mean, that was that's, that's clear in that was very clear and stated very clear in the dealings we had with Mr. Burnell, that it would be there. I think it's, I think it's all going to be pretty well, okay? And when I say it ain't going to be in the same place, it won't be in the same place. If I have to go to this town and get every signature and every veteran to sign it and sit down there when they go to remove it. You know, you can always build something around it.